So Jeff, uh, we're in, a, I think, a period of evolution or revolution in the treatments of metastatic melanoma. Could you just review for us the, uh, the latest treatment advances in metastatic melanoma? Well, of course, you know, over the last decade, we've had IPI being developed as a treatment for metastatic disease. The drug was approved in 2011. It's received a reasonable widespread use in the community, at least where I practice, and probably around most parts of the U.S., has reasonable benefits. It was the first drug approved that had benefit in a randomized trial in melanoma, but of course now we've moved on and we're in the realm of looking at other checkpoint protein inhibitors from the immune point of view, and we have PD-1 and PD-L1 antibodies, and you're talking about drugs with a 30-40% response rate, slightly less in those who have failed IPI, slightly more in those who are IPI naive, but uh, major durations of response uh, some lasting, two, uh, on average, two years with some of the drugs, uh, undoubted prolongation of survival, um, and clear benefit for the patients. And uh, both PD-1 antibodies, the Merck and the BMS ones, have been uh, tested in phase three trials. And probably at ASCO next year, we'll hear the results of the phase three trials, or maybe even at ESMO this year. But a lot of promise for PD-1, PD-L1 blockade. On the targeted therapy side, uh, you know, again, 2011 was a good year. Vemorafenib, the first BRAF inhibitor, was approved. And now in January of this year, we have uh, BRAF plus MEK combinations, um, although the jury is still out on how much better the combination would be than just the single BRAF inhibitor. I have every confidence that at the end of the day, when we look at the phase three studies of the BRAF MEK combination versus the BRAF drugs alone, the combination will win out in terms of both overall survival, response rate, and overall benefit. So uh, it's a new day. We now have lots of antibodies against other checkpoint proteins, antibodies that are agonistic antibodies, and a ton of combination trials. And of course, since the PD-1 and PD-L1 antibodies work well in metastatic disease, of course, everybody will be testing them in the adjuvant mode. In fact, I've even done my own adjuvant pilot trial with PD-1 antibody nivolumab, and the results looked very, very good. So, so that's a great overview, Jeff. I, I just want to ask Omid, because given what you've just said, is there any role for hydrocentralucan 2 or chemotherapy in today's armamentarium for treatment of mental, men, metastatic melanoma? Well, high dose IL-2, absolutely. There is a role. The patients have to be picked appropriately. This is not something for everyone. Good heart, good lung, and we have to understand where it really fits. Jeff was alluding to the PD-1 antibodies, and those PD-1, PD-L ones are, have very minimal toxicity. They're easily given, and in fact, I believe they'll translate if and once approved to the community. Uh, they have high response rates and long duration of response, but they don't have a 100% response rate. And there are patients that we've seen that have failed checkpoint inhibition that are great high dose IL-2 candidates. So high dose IL-2 does have a role. We've tried multiple times with chemotherapy to show a survival advantage. And most lay oncologists don't realize that decarbazine was approved, but was not approved based on a survival advantage. And no chemotherapy regimen has shown a survival advantage at this time. In my practice, I use it when there are, are not a lot of options. I use it for uh, palliation because combination chemotherapy can have high response rates. But still, I, we look forward to the benefits of these new agents alone and in combination. So we're going to get back to these new agents, but I want to ask Jeff this question because that, that's an excellent response to the IL-2 chemotherapy question. But, you know, what's really driving a lot, uh, a lot of the questions in the community is for the patients who have a mutant BRAF mutation. So I want to ask you two questions. One, if you, when you look for, for a mutant BRAF, which test do you use? How do you, how do you test for it? And the second is, this patient comes to you with metastatic disease. How do you decide whether to give that patient targeted therapy, dibrafenib, tremendib, as Jeff suggested, or an immune therapy, whether it's ipilimumab or an anti-PD-1 agent on a clinical trial? How do you decide? How do you make those decisions? Well, I mean, the landscape is changing so greatly. Let, let me first address the first question, and, and that's what, what kind of test we, we use. We use a CLIA-approved test that, that has been developed in-house. 
um, our feeling is that it, it's, it's more uh, broadly applicable to all the BRAF V600 variants. And there, certainly some of those patients respond to BRAF uh, inhibitor therapy. So we certainly want to pick those patients up. I think we also want to know if they have a KIT mutation. And KIT mutations can be picked up in, a, in even a simple multiplex PCR type, type test that looks at a few genes and a few hotspot areas in the genes. But I think that field is moving so quickly that soon, you know, we're going to, we're going to get a lot more data. Uh, by by some of the next gen sequencing uh, uh, studies and and analyses that are being done as we speak now. So we don't use the standard test, uh, but it is a good test. But you need to know its limitations. In terms of what treatment to to give first, I think that's the biggest question. Uh, until. We know how to combine the immune therapy with the targeted therapy. This question's going to be out there. And there is uh, hopefully soon going to be a, an ECOG study, an intergroup study, that will actually look at that exact question, randomizing patients to first trametinib and abrafenib uh, versus ipilimumab and nivolumab. And then at relapse, they would get the other, the other combination. And I think that's going to be just a very critical study uh, for all of us until we know how to combine them. I think lastly, you know, I, I assess those patients now with that, now that only ipilimumab is approved um, or interleukin-2 and basically make a decision based on, on some factors that we know are associated with rapid progression and very short survival. And those are patients with high LDH, patients with a, a poor performance status who clearly need symptomatic improvement quickly, uh, patients with bulky liver disease or even multiple brain metastases. So yeah, it's in a selection that, that uses factors that we know are associated with poor outcome. And we, we know that the combination or the single agent BRAF inhibitors are, are quite active and, and active very rapidly in that group of patients. So, so hopefully the answer to that will be that it's not important that we'll know how to combine all these drugs and really push the field way forward.